Oh yes, Leo Photo GS1 arrived in the mail. So now I can uh, adapt my Picatinny rail on my standard FX Impact trigger guard to my little camera tripod. So we're going to do that. We're going to uh, set the gun up today. It is Thursday. It is a gorgeous blue sky day. Lovely. It's the end of winter and um, yeah, it's like 25 degrees in Queensland. It is perfect. So for the rest of the world, sorry, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> but uh, we're going to set the gun up today so that um, next time we get an early knockoff, we can go out and do some tripod shooting. All right, so there she is. Hasn't been out of the safe for a little while. A little bit of surface rust. I guess I forgot to put my um, dehumidifier thingies in there. So, all good. Doesn't appear to have lost any air. It's been in there for maybe three weeks to a month or thereabouts. Um, bottle pressure's holding. Regulator has probably crept up about five bar, which isn't terrible. Probably need to service that regulator at some point, but for being in the safe for that long, it sort of crept up a little bit and then stabilized, so not terrible. Not terrible. But what we're gonna do is take the old Benderoonie off, um, put the night sight back on, because I haven't really had much time on that night sight yet, so I wanna use it and play with it and have a good time, and most of the hunting that we're gonna do is gonna be at night. Um, and then take the trigger guard off, put the standard trigger guard on, and then, um, yeah, use it with my little Picatinny to Arca rail adapter. So, let's get to it. Uh. Wonderful. Still got mostly, mostly full battery. We're probably looking at like 80%. They're at 10 mil. Gently, gently, gently. Now, next step, I'm gonna attach my weird little homemade camera bracket tripod thing because I don't wanna to have to carry a second tripod just for the camera. So I'm going to be running this, which is a piece of PVC pipe with a little thickener put in there so that it fits nicely. And that runs on the end of my Picatinny rail on the side, like so, just behind the end of the barrel. And we tighten that up with whatever Allen key that is. And then attach this here camera bracket. And we use this to mount smartphone or whatever camera you need to mount on there. And gives you a... Uh, nice camera angle to use so it will save me from having to carry more than one tripod right so here we are took a bit of finagling to uh, get it right but this is the uh, camera angle that you're gonna get so I'm gonna have a shot of me behind the gun whenever I'm shooting and uh, it's hooked up with all of my weird witchcraft that I've set up here and then the second um, scope cam is obviously going to be the camera inside the night vision scope so good times good times this light is going to be way too bright so I'm going to turn that all the way down and maybe even put a piece of tape over it and should give us a nice I'll, I'll make it look sort of nice and night visiony in post I guess and um, yeah just do the best I can with what I got and that way I'll be able to just carry just the one tripod and all of it will be, all be together so user friendliness big plus I've actually been thinking about buying a 360 cam so that I can just record everything because if I had the 360 cam here I could in editing afterwards I could put like a whole bunch of different cool looking angles and effects on it so I don't know do you think it's worth it it's gonna be like 800 bucks it's pretty pricey <laughs> I'm not gonna lie it's probably a silly idea right torch one of the last pieces of the puzzle this would be so heavy and horrible to walk around with if i wasn't using a tripod so much stuff hanging off it there really is something to be said for a uh, a nice simple gun although i do enjoy this one may have to uh, do another night hunt with 
my Benjamin and those hybrid slugs just for maximum giggles. Cool. All right. My beloved Viper Tech, probably one of the best bipods in the game right now. Do love. Very good. Glorious K&L rail. Very nice. But not what we need for today. Oh no! I'm gonna have to change it. I'm gonna have to change it. May have to put this on after I've filled the gun. Because it's probably gonna block that fill port. It's a little bit disappointing. Alright. Take two. Will it fit? I may have to cut it. I don't want to cut it, but. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe we'll have to put it on the end of this bad boy. It's going to be a little off balance, but uh, if it's not going to fit on this one, for shame. For shame. So I was hoping that I could present this as a budget option, but it certainly won't be unless you have an angle grinder. I mean, I could, I could just cut the back half or the front half of it off and just use, just use those two, but I don't really want to do that just yet. So. Disappointment, disappointment. Oh well, I'll put the uh, put the long rail back on again, and we'll just have to have it down there and keep the uh, tripod clamped up a little bit tighter than I was going to have to, because the balance point of the impact is about here, just underneath the fill probe. So it's going to be quite a bit further forward than that. Oh well. How about that? It works. With that um, piece being so far forward of the balance point, you do have to really crank on the, uh, on the knob to get it to, to stay there, but whatever, good enough. Works for a budget setup, very happy, very happy. Should make hunting a breeze, because all you do is sort of pick it up and uh, kick those tripod legs in together, put one hand on the gun, one hand on the tripod, and walk to your next spot, and you're all good. So, yeah, happy days. So, before we get too deep into these hunting clips, um, I just want to give some context to what I'm actually doing here. Um, I am hunting cane toads. Cane toads are an introduced species. They're native to South and Mainland Middle America, and they were brought to Australia in the 30s by the Bureau of Sugar Experiment Stations, which is now Sugar Research Australia. They were trying to control cane beetles and French's beetle, um, both of them are native to Australia, but they were uh, eating the sugarcane crops and they brought the toads in to try and um, control those beetles. They didn't work uh, and basically they went crazy and they now have serious ecological effects. Native animals in particular, um, the, these toads are poisonous. Australia being a very isolated place uh, on, on the edge of the horizon of the rest of the world. It, um, our, our predators haven't really encountered things like this before, so um, big long-term negative effects from these cane toads. At any point, if you remove them from the environment, the environment tends to recover pretty quickly, even if it's only uh, on a local scale, not on a um, global scale, because it seems like the cat's kind of out of the bag at the moment with them. They move about 60 kilometers west every year, um, they're in Queensland, the Northern Territory, New South Wales, and uh, even in the Torres Strait Islands now because uh, apparently people took them there unwittingly on boats. They, they get into dark, wet places and hide, and then uh, all of a sudden you've got them on a new, a new country. So that's what we're doing. We're not, uh, we're not shooting native frogs, we're shooting an introduced pest species that needs to be removed as best we can. So I did try and use my first person view camera setup with that little uh, smartphone setup that I had, but it didn't work because my eyes had adjusted to the darkness and the flash on the camera was exceedingly bright even when it was taped over um, to the point where if you have enough light for the actual camera on the smartphone to pick you up at night like this, uh, it's too bright for your eyes once they've adjusted. So we're just gonna run with scope cam footage. And as you can see, uh, my sheep has had a lamb, a little lamby lamb. He's going to be delicious in about a year. Um, and the, uh, the scope cam itself is, um, seems to be going pretty good. I've figured out how to focus the, um, the torch properly. You need to be um, looking through the scope when you 
focus it and focus it so that it's sort of until you start seeing the shadow creep in on the picture and then widen it out so that the whole picture is as bright as it can be. It's really good once you get it all set up. So pretty happy with how it's going. I do need to buy a new memory card though because even though I was filming in 120 frames a second, it was only recording in 15 frames a second. And I think that is because of the write speed of the card that I have in there, the SD card, the memory card. But first toad, shot him right in the chin, dead as a doorknob. Pretty happy with that. No dramas there. All these toads, by the way, were um, collected, bagged up and uh, put in the bin. They weren't left lying on the ground for our native animals to come and eat and get poisoned by. But uh, basically we spent uh, a couple of nights this week out uh, wandering around after dark. Um, they were all work nights, so uh, the first couple of nights were kind of cold and short. So I only got one or two toads each night. But uh, the last night, Friday night, uh, it was a good one. It was warm. It was, uh, I was out there from about sort of 7.30 until 9.30, just casually wandering around, enjoying the evening. Really nice clear skies, but uh, quite humid. It all worked out pretty well. There was a bit more going on. When it's really cold, the toads don't seem to be super active, but uh, yeah, when it warmed up like, like it was last night, it was great. I think I got about seven in one night. So this is really nice to see. We had a bunch of uh, little stony creek frogs come out again. Um, they didn't come out on the cold nights. They were a bit elusive like the toads were. But uh, on Friday night, last night, they, um, they were out and about in force, all singing their little songs. They haven't changed colors yet. Um, at a certain point in the year, I think once it gets a little bit warmer, they, um, they go from like a brown color to a yellow color for some reason. Maybe it's some sort of mating thing. I'm not really sure, but it's good to see them hanging out and living their best lives. They're native, so they're more than welcome here. Didn't shoot them, left them well alone, of course. Um, I have no beef with them. Right, so to wrap things up, uh, really happy with how the tripod worked out. Um, with that little Leo photo adapter, um, it's really easy to take whatever Picatinny rail you can over to the, uh, the tripod um, attachment, which is good. Um, it won't work with a standard Picatinny rail on an FX impact, but you could cut the, uh, the actual Arca rail attachment to fit if you really wanted to. Um, I'm lucky enough to have a K&S rail, so I just popped it on the end of that and it worked a treat. Uh, it's nice and light, that Zome tripod. It took the weight of me leaning on it with my gun on it as well, uh, really well, no dramas there. Uh, and I plan on using it often in the future. It's a real joy to just sort of pick it up and wander over, plonk it on down, and then you get like a real nice steady shot 
Um, not only is it easy to shoot, but it's easy to get uh, much nicer footage. Your footage isn't all shaky and horrible. It's, uh, it's steady because it's on a tripod. And you can also lock the tripod off and it'll hold your gun for you. And you don't have to put it down in the dirt. And it's just a better way of doing things. And it's very affordable too, I think. Um, as far as tripods go, for something that cheap, um, I'm really happy with it. And especially considering it's not even designed to do what I'm doing with it. So, happy days all round. Very happy. Um, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. We're nearly at 5k, very nearly at 5k. New stickers inbound for when we do hit 5k. Um, and also don't forget to support the people who support me. Check out Airgun 101 the, uh, for all your outstanding Airgun creator content. Um, and also check out Herman's Guns, they're always very generous with me, helping me out with products and uh, good prices on things. So skip on over to hermansguns.com.au and um, check out their range, see if you can find something that you like there. Uh, currently I don't have any way of uh, supporting the show, I shut down my Patreon because in a year and a half I made six dollars. Shout out to all my OGs who gave me a dollar on, uh, on Patreon. But I think there's better ways to sort of run like a channel support thing. So I think I'll either do an Amazon affiliate link or um, just work with uh, different dealers or something like that to get you better prices. Because I'd rather you uh, you spend your money on you and you just enjoy my content. That'd be uh, I think that's better. Um, but yeah, cool. Okay, bye.